Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to have a little bit of fun with the LG Wing. And I told you all I got this a little while back. I did my unboxing and first impressions. And I've had a little bit of time to use it, set it up, and you know have some time to spend with the phone so I can give you a little bit more detailed thoughts on the device. Because I think that it's pretty decent. And I think the build quality is exceptional. I think that LG did a really good job here. It's just a little bit too late. And we'll talk about that in this video along with my good friend, the LG Wing. But before we get into all that, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about the LG Wing. Okay, so now that I've fidgeted enough with the screen, <laughs> we've got two different screens going on here. And you're probably thinking, why do I need two screens like this? With the one up top that's horizontal, and then the one down here that's got the traditional vertical look to it. You've got a 6.8 inch OLED screen up here and a 3.9 inch down there. You can see that it, it's kind of square. And it's funny because it, rem it reminds me a lot of the older Blackberries because they have little small square screens on them. So that was just something that I noticed as soon as I started using it. But it has a lot of things going for it. Effectively, this phone is basically an LG Velvet. It looks very much like the Velvet. It's a sharp looking phone and I'm really impressed with the build quality. I did not think it was gonna be made this well. I thought for sure that LG was gonna cheap out on it and it was gonna feel clunky, it was gonna feel, it was gonna feel cheap. And it doesn't. I've been really impressed and it's just gotten easier and easier to use the hinge. You get used to it with just using your thumb and sliding it over. One thing you absolutely have to do though is put a case on it. It gives you that extra buffer on your hand. Otherwise it's just, it's very awkward trying to open it with one hand if you don't have a case on it and you're gonna drop it. Like within the first two or three days, you're gonna drop it, it's gonna happen. So make sure you have a case. I got this uh, Spigen one. I'll have a link down on the drop down. I paid like 12 bucks or something on Amazon. Totally love it, it's a good case. I would take it off so you could see the inside, but it has one of those sticky pads on the inside of it. So it's like, it helps stick onto the phone. So I'm not taking that off again. Yeah, it's got the three cameras on the back, 64 megapixel camera. It's got the two ultra wides on here. So it's really interesting because one of them allows you to do the whole gimbal recording, which is neat. If you fire it up, open the screen up like this, you click on the camera, it puts it in gimbal mode, which is really cool. So on here, when you're recording, you can use this and you can actually move the camera around. It's, it's really cool. And you can record in this mode. You can do follow me mode. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff. And you can even do dual recording, which this is cool too. So you just hit the button there for dual recording. Pop-up camera. Look at that. A pop-up camera. So you can see here, you can see me on one. And then you see the other side over here. So it records on the front and the back at the same time. And normally it doesn't look like, there we go. It's a little bit better. It was just, that was too close up. It's really neat. that They put a lot of thought into this phone with regard to actually using it in like wing mode. It's pretty cool. And of course wing because, you know, it's a screen stretched out like an eagle uh, or a peacock, <laughs> whichever you want to call it. The screen you can see here though is actually really, really thin. It's like scary thin because you wouldn't expect it. It's just, it's just like super tiny thin. Uh, maybe that's how the regular screens are on the phone, but you just don't get that experience because you've got the battery and the chassis and everything else on it. But yeah, it's got one single speaker. I wish it had stereo speakers. It doesn't, but the speaker is adequate. The cameras are actually way better than I thought they were going to be. I thought the velvet cameras were pretty good. So, I mean, it, it works out pretty well in here as well. I'll let you see that some more whenever I do my full review. This is kind of like, how does the phone work? Is it any good? What do I think about it? You know, stuff like that. It's not so much camera and video. I'll get into that more later. I'm going to shoot some video clips. I'm going to take plenty of pictures. So you'll get that in the full review. I really just wanted to talk about the form factor and how well it works and things like that. So it's running Android 10. I've got a January security update right now. We're about to be in March. Pretty on par for LG. Not really. I don't expect them to have monthly security updates. If they did, they probably wouldn't be in the buying that they're in right now. But the phone itself, I think they did a good job with it. And had this phone come out like six to 12 months earlier than it did, I think it would have been a much more successful phone. I think it would have helped out LG a lot more as opposed to it being almost kind of like a swan song phone because right now they're talking about not even actually making phones anymore, maybe licensing it out to somebody else, selling the selling the LG you know phone name to someone else to use. So 
there's a lot of things going on. I'm sure we'll hear about this as time goes by, but they did a good job with this one, and it, it, it's pretty robust. I mean, it, it doesn't, if you, if you really shake it, you can hear that it moves around some, but it, largely it stays in place. You don't have any problems with it. You get the little spindle up there, and you can see as far as like the orientation of the screen, it does move and rotate around. You can use it in different ways too. You can use it like this. It's really cool because you can fire up Internet Explorer. You can be typing down here. You can do your text messages, phone calls, email, and then have something up here. Like if you want to fire up YouTube. So this is like the ultimate way to be able to watch videos, binge TV shows, things like that. And, or, you know, watch live streams and chat down in the comments on the bottom. So there are a lot of different things you can do with this. They actually make it worthwhile. $9.99 MSRP. Totally not worth that. It is not worth that at all. Uh, but if you can get one for 500 bucks, if you can get one when you find them on sale, T-Mobile and LG both had like a big sale on them recently where they were half off for like a couple of weeks. So if you can find something like that, this phone is absolutely worth $500. You will love it for $500. 5G, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 4,000 milliamp battery. It actually powers the phone all day. I haven't really had any significant battery problems with it either. One thing, make sure you change the keyboard on here when you get it. The LG keyboard is like the most horrendous software keyboard I've used since the advent of software keyboards. It's bad. But if you put Gboard on here, it's actually a really, really nice typing experience. I've really been enjoying typing on here. The haptic feedback is a little on the soft side, but very accurate, very nice. It's actually a very enjoyable and accurate typing experience. So they, if you put Gboard on here, it's one of the best typing experiences on a phone that I've had the pleasure of using in the last year or so. So there are a lot of positive things for it. And then you've got the pop-up selfie camera, which is just neat. Go ahead and open that up there. Ta-da. And then if you drop it, it detects it and it pulls down to protect the lens. So there you go. Pretty cool there. So it's loaded out pretty well. Very capable phone. Lots of I'm not going to say lots of power, but you're not going to notice really much of a difference. It's one of those things where it's like, yes, it is a Snapdragon 765, but that's perfectly capable. I tested it out in so many phones this year. It works out great. The Pixel 5, the TCL uh, 10 5G UW, the LG Velvet. I mean, there's just been several phones that I've used it in, and now this, it makes for a really pleasant experience. So the 765 is like a magical chipset where you get plenty of power to where it feels like a day-to-day -day flagship phone. It doesn't really stutter. You don't really have any issues. And then it's good on battery life because it's not a high-end 8 series processor. So I really like the angle that they took with this phone because it just works. And some people are going to be like, yeah, okay, this is not the greatest design ever. This is not for me. That's cool. This is a novel form factor design. This is something that they tried to be a little creative. They didn't want to be like everybody else. They wanted to come up with something and yes, sometimes LG has some of the weirdest gimmicks when it comes to phones. But this one, I don't think so. I think that it actually can be very functional. And if the price is right, is a very good deal. It's not a $1,400 phone like the Z Flip. It's not a $2,000 phone like the Fold 2. $999, if you want to pay that and get like a carrier financing deal or trade-in, you know, maybe that might work. Do not pay $1,000 for this. You can find it a lot of places cheaper than that, especially used or renewed or whatever. And then this one, yeah, if you can get it for 500 bucks brand new somewhere or less, totally worth it. You'll really enjoy the phone, I think. So yeah, uh, I think that, I think it works. Yeah, that was the biggest question that I needed to answer when I first saw this phone. There was the initial, what the heck are these guys thinking? And then I looked at it some more and then there was the second, what are these guys thinking? <laughs> and then there was the, well, I'm not gonna judge this. I'll wait till I get it in my hands and see what's going on. Finally got a hold of one, and yeah, I, I think that it's very doable. I don't think that it's overly awkward at all. You get used to it very quickly, and then you can even turn it like this, and then the other screen over here works. You can put this on like a, a car mount inside your car and hold the phone, and then the other side is like the GPS. There's just, there's a lot of different applications for it, and you just have to sort it out, feel it out, use it, and find what works best for you, but it's pretty neat. And like I said, the best thing about this for me is being able to watch like YouTube videos or you're watching uh, regular videos. And if you're like me and you like to be able to talk to people while you're watching videos, this is perfect because you can sit there and text. You can use Chrome, you can type, you can use Reddit, you can use pretty much whatever you want to use down here on the bottom. And then you've got the video playing up top. So it doesn't take you away from the experience. 
You're not having to watch windowed mode. Like, windowed mode is a thing of the past with this phone. You get windowed mode all right, but it's this huge screen for a window. So th there's a lot of things I think they did right with this. I wish it was a fully-fledged flagship. That would make this, if this were a full-fledged flagship, I would use it as a daily driver. Like, I could totally see myself doing that. So that right there is a big enough vote of confidence from me that the concept, proof of concept, and in reality, it works. Build quality is fine. I just wish, I do wish it had better specs on it, but the specs that are in here are totally good. I know where they were going with this. They were trying to do a, like an in mass scale usage of supplies because probably they had so many screens and so many Snapdragon 765s from the Velvet. They just said, hey, we'll save some money. We'll come up with a way to make this like inventive and use it. And then we'll sell it for less than the other guys. And that was really a smart and good approach on LG's part. So I commend them for that. I just wish this phone came out six to 12 months earlier and I hope for the best with them. I hope we still see the rollable. I'd love to see a part two to this, but on a flagship level and we'll see where things go with LG. But if you were curious about it, I like it. I think it works. Oh, and one other thing. So it's also got a under the screen fingerprint sensor. It's an optical one. It's not the fastest in the world, but it is pretty accurate. So you can go ahead and use it that way. There's no facial recognition you would have to have the selfie camera pop up and plus the LG phones of 2020 didn't have facial recognition. So one thing I did, because it, it, it irks me that, you know, whenever you do the screen out to the side, the fingerprint sensor is up top. So what I did was I actually set my index finger in my left thumb so I could use it while the screen pops out instead of it being down here. So you can do that or you can just do it the traditional way, fire it up down at the bottom and then kick the screen out to the side. So there we have it. So that's all I've got on my look at the LG Wing. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully I've given you some confidence if you're looking at picking one of these up. Hopefully if I've been able to give you some answers if you're wondering what the heck this phone does or why it exists. Because that's legitimate. You're a very sane person if you thought that. So that's all I've got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section. I will get back with you. I still have the full review coming and some more videos as well. So don't worry. More happy is coming. So if you enjoyed the video also, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.